Tonight, there's a major settlement between Maine and the three credit reporting agencies. The agencies have now agreed to change the way they do business to better protect your private information and to produce more accurate credit reports. The announcement comes just two months after a Fox 23 investigation exposed a big mistake made by one of the bureaus. In March, Equifax sent a Maine woman hundreds of confidential credit files that weren't hers. And tonight, we also have new information on that case and what went wrong. The sheer volume, 312 uh, envelopes received by the woman in Biddeford, uh, set this case apart from any that we had dealt with before. Superintendent of the Bureau of Consumer Credit Protection, Will Lund, talking for the first time on camera about this, the massive amount of mail sent to Katie Manning in March. It's people's personal information, their credit report, their social security, birthdays, full names, current address, previous addresses. Envelope after envelope stuffed with the private information of complete strangers, all sent to her by the credit reporting company Equifax. Every time I try to get to a representative, it disconnected the line. Manning's next call was to us, 13 on your side. That's when we met up with her and connected her with state regulators. Releasing this much information inadvertently is not a small matter, it's, it's a major matter. Lund picked up and inventoried each envelope, finding, he says, they belong to consumers in at least five states, including five from Maine. More than 300 Equifax credit reports. Equifax Vice President of Corporate Communications Tim Klein told me on the phone at the time, this is a serious situation. He's since stopped responding to my requests for additional details, so we used Maine's right to know law to get all letters and emails between Lund and lawyers for Equifax. Two days after our story, Equifax filed a notice of a security breach citing a technical error. And now a new email sent to Lund on Monday is revealing even more. What has the conclusion been of, of what went wrong and what caused what they call the technical error? This was a computer error. The company attempted to upgrade or, or uh, put a new process in place that had to do with addressing uh, envelopes it malfunctioned in this particular case. And Lund says Manning wasn't the only one to get other people's credit files in this mailing mix-up. In fact, according to that email, the software problem stretched two days before the company reverted back to its prior application. This was the largest uh, case. Attorney General change. Janet Mills says this case highlights ongoing concerns with the three main credit reporting agencies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. She and attorneys general in 30 other states are announcing a $6 million settlement with the agencies to settle claims the agencies violated consumer protection laws. This is about changing behavior. Under the terms of the settlement, the agencies must make a number of changes to their business practices, including implementing a faster process for handling complicated disputes. Particularly when it involves identity theft, uh, fraud or mixed up files, as, as you know, there have been mixed up files and people have been sent erroneous credit information or credit information about different people, other people. Mill says she's hopeful the settlement will help ease the concerns of consumers, giving you more accurate reports and improved communication. We're going to monitor this thing for the next three years and make sure we uh, keep their feet to the fire, hold their feet to the fire and uh, change their corporate behaviors to protect our consumers. You may not think about your credit score very much until you need to buy something and don't have the cash to pay for it. But that one number can have a huge impact on your life. Investigative reporter John Crisos is on your side with some changes coming to make sure your score is more fair and accurate, John. This right here is the more than 50 page settlement between Maine, dozens of other states and the credit reporting agencies. Those agencies have agreed to do a better job checking for mistakes and then fixing them. They'll also stop lowering your score for things like unpaid tickets and fines. Getting a mortgage, car loan, apartment, even a cell phone, it all comes down to this, your credit score. Our credit impacts us in so many ways. Bad credit can make it tough to get the things you want. Even small things can have a big impact. Remember those parking tickets you forgot to pay or those library fines? Up until now, those could lower your score. But part of this new settlement with the credit reporting agency says 
Not anymore. If the debt didn't come from a contract or agreement to pay, the agencies can't use that debt against you. I don't want to encourage people to get fines and tickets, but you know what? Why should that affect your credit report? Maine Attorney General Janet Mills says that's just the start of some big changes you should see within the next three years. Mills and attorneys general in 30 other states have settled with the agencies after they accused them of violating consumer protection laws. The agencies also have to wait six months from the time medical debt is reported to add the debt to your credit report. To give you time to resolve that with your local doctor, hospital, medical provider, that's an important step. Consumer advocates are praising the push to get the agencies to change the way they do business. They've also agreed to be more careful to produce more accurate credit reports and be more responsive when you call to correct mistakes. These changes are some of the biggest we've seen in over a decade. So it's really time for this kind of information to be reviewed, to be updated. Staying on top of mistakes and addressing them quickly is really a key to keeping a strong credit history. But in order to report the mistakes, you need to know they're there. That's why the financial industry suggests you check your credit report once a year. It is free and we have a link on our website. The I-Team tonight with a new warning about protecting yourself and your kids from identity thieves. A change to state law is giving Maine families a new way to avoid a scary and unexpected financial hole. And the I-Team's John Carisos is here now with the steps that you should take right now. John. Well, we all know the importance of having secure passwords and shredding personal documents, all as ways to protect our personal information. But now after hundreds of recent data breaches, experts say you should take it a step further and freeze your credit and your children's credit before you're a victim of identity theft. Everything is more for me to do because I already have bad credit and that just makes it harder for to live. Brittany Hale is an identity theft victim. She's still trying to clean up a financial mess that started when she was just 13 years old. Someone got a loan using her name and personal information. She didn't find out about it until years later. I tried to get a phone in my name and they told me that I had an outstanding loan in my name and I just turned 18 like a month before. Now with kids of her own, hey. Hale wants to protect her kids from what happened to her when she was a child. I worry about that all the time. It's a very lucrative thing for the identity thief because they have a free run of that child's credit until the child becomes old enough to apply for credit. At Maine Identity Services, Jane Carpenter works to stop identity theft and explains Maine parents have a new tool to fight back. You can now put a security freeze on your child's credit. It works by preventing a credit report from being shared with potential new creditors like credit card, cell phone, or mortgage companies. The new law is hugely important for residents of Maine. The I-Team tracked down a study by researchers at Carnegie Mellon finding 10% of children have someone else using their social security number. There were children who were as young as six months whose information had been used to purchase cars. Uh, there was a child who was uh, probably five or six years old who was in foreclosure. Carpenter recommends while you're freezing your child's credit to freeze yours too even if you have credit monitoring, a service often offered for free after a data breach. She says credit monitoring doesn't prevent fraud, only helps detect it after it happens, giving some a false sense of security. So that's the big difference, and that's why we advocate um, signing up for a security freeze rather than credit monitoring. The consumer group U.S. PERG and the Maine Bureau of Consumer Credit Protection agree, suggesting a security freeze is the best thing you can do to protect yourself and your family from financial fraud. It's as important as having a lock on your front door. With the new law, Maine also joins a small handful of other states making security freezes free. Before, you had to pay $10 to each of the three credit bureaus. Get your information locked down and then you're doing the best that you can to try to, to protect your good name. Again, in Maine, you can now get a free security freeze by contacting each of the three credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And we do have all of the information on how to do that clearly explained on our website, WGME.com. So, John, say you do this credit freeze. You call those three companies. You do this, but then, okay, I want a mortgage or I want to open a credit card. Then what do you do? Yeah, great question and important to know when you do sign up for a freeze. The credit bureau actually gives you a PIN at the time when you sign up. You can then use that secret number to temporarily lift the freeze 
queries on your file if you do need to give access to a creditor to get something like a cell phone or a mortgage. And good to know it's free. Great information. It yeah. is now. Yeah.